what percent of muscle mass do humans lose like per year and when does that start like you mentioned <laughs> sarcopenia yeah this this is the you know i would say sixty four thousand dollars although that wouldn't get you much these days probably more question i suppose um most people will say that somewhere in your 30s or 40s uh, you, you're beginning to lose muscle mass. My own personal opinion is it's somewhere probably closer to about 56 or thereabouts, but that's personal. Uh, <laughs> um, but something, you know, probably for most people that you can see in their 40s. And usually what we say on a population level, it's about a 1% loss of muscle mass per year and about a 1% to 3% drop in strength or power. Um, so the muscle mass decline is actually slower than we lose strength and, and strength is, as they say, is the outward manifestation of muscle, but it must speak then to the quality of the muscle you have and your brain's ability to be able to talk to muscle and get you do, to do things. So um, as much as we can do to try and slow that, that would be beneficial as we get into our older age for sure. Yeah, and I definitely want to get into to all that stuff, um, what, you know, what, how we can counter mm -hmm. sarcopenia and loss yeah. of muscle mass. Do you, um, the, the building up of the muscle reserves, now like right. that's something I've heard you talk about or, yep. you know, it's, you know, it's something that's a common knowledge to some degree. Mm -hmm. Yep. What does that mean? And like, yeah. like, is it, you know, really important to do that before a certain age? And yeah. if you don't do that, can you still start later in life? Yeah. Yeah. yeah great question. Uh, I mean... I think the parallel that most people are most familiar with that we can sort of pick on and say, you know, women in particular are told that we can, we can build bone mass up until probably about 30. Men, it's about the same. Um, that when women head towards the menopausal transition, that they're definitely going to lose bone mass. You want to start at a higher level as possible. I mean, everybody after the menopausal transition loses bone at about the same rate. So you really would like to be on a higher plateau before you get there. I, I think the concept is entirely similar uh, with muscle. The good news is, is that probably even past your 30s, into your 40s, 60s, probably even into your 70s, we can still gain a little bit of muscle. We can definitely gain strength by concerted you know, resistance exercise usually. So you probably have a much bigger window to accumulate the muscle that you have but it's the same concept. You'd like to go into older age when you're beginning to lose muscle at a higher level because then you're starting to decline from a, from a higher plateau. So it's a similar concept. I don't know that we know exactly how much and when, um, but there are even studies in nonagenarians, you know, people in their 90s lifting weights, and they can get stronger. Now gaining muscle, not so much, but they, they get function back. So there's some adaptability left in the system in a muscle sense that isn't there in, in, with bones, for example. And at the end of the day, as, as you're mentioning, you know, being able to get up out of your chair and mm. like these, these sorts of um, important little like everyday activities that we take for granted when we're younger yeah. can make a difference when you're older and you like fall and break a hip and then yeah. you kind of down go into this downward spiral yeah so um strength does make a difference with that right like yeah. just having even if you're not gaining muscle mass like being able to have the strength to do that yeah I, I, absolutely i mean i think that that's um, maybe a little bit uh, overstated with the importance of muscle mass not that it's not important but the function and the outcome so the strength and the power is really the, the key point um even something as simple as walking speed or what we call normal gait speed and you know, the, the example I like to give is to say, you know, you're standing at an intersection, the walk signal comes on and, you know, there's a certain distance you've got across in a certain amount of time. So you need a certain gate speed. And if you, you know, not that the motorist hopefully wouldn't stop, but, you know, you're under pressure to make it across an intersection, let's say. Um, it's important. And we know, you know, fully that once you get to a certain level of strength, your gate speed drops it becomes more difficult to do activities of daily living. And then you're looking at full-time institutionalized care. Right, quality of life yep. coming down. And, and it kind of goes back to that, that, that concept of um, you know, improving health span, right? Yep. You know, basically being able to delay the onset of these age-related diseases yeah. and diseases that hit us later in life yep. any possible way that we can, Absolutely. even if we don't necessarily live much, much longer. But yeah. in, in some cases, delaying those diseases, you might 
get a year or two, right? And